Well, it's the heart of the hurricane season, statistically speaking, and also it is a big part of our weather at the moment here in northwestern Europe. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. It is a time of the year, a prime time when the tropics merge with the mid latitudes and we see some very fascinating weather indeed. The system that is now a 973 millibar low centered directly over the Western Isles of Scotland. We have got the remnants of once category five Hurricane Lee. Now, if we look at Wikipedia, you can see here this absolutely spectacular satellite image capturing Lee as a monster category five hurricane to the north of the Leeward Islands some seven to 10 days ago. It has came all the way off Africa, taken a westward, a traditional westward track across the tropical Atlantic. And you can see here it originated off Africa as a wave, then it crossed over the very warm waters, 26 to 29 Celsius in water temperatures. And it bombed out as a major monstrous category five hurricane. Then it took a turn, went through multiple uh, I will replacement replacement cycles took a track just to the west of Bermuda and then made landfall in the western fringes of uh, Nova Scotia and up into uh, New Brunswick uh, back during Saturday of last week here. Um, it did in, uh, intensify from a tropical storm to a category five hurricane within 24 hours and um, accelerated its winds at the core with uh, 85 miles per hour so it extended its winds from uh, you know from like i say tropical storm to category five within a 24-hour period not a record but certainly explosive psychogenesis that's for sure here and of course it underwent just before making a canadian landfall it did undergo the transition from tropical to cold core, extra tropical transition, um, you know, is, is how it's um, classified. And of course, that is when it loses the primary fuel of warm sea surface temperatures. The, the structure of the storm kind of changes, develops frontal systems. And of course, it then the primary driver of these extra tropical systems wants to leave the 26 to 27 celsius threshold as required for tropical cyclones then the atmosphere becomes the driver in terms of regeneration and re-deepening of the system itself so you can see here that as we go through then you know it's going to be interesting actually look at the let's have a look back so this is a gfs um overview chart of the north atlantic this is extending away back to Monday, the 18th of September. And you can see, I want to show you the evolution of this pattern. It is a truly fascinating situation that we've got at play at the moment. If you're fascinated in meteorology, this is the time to really watch how the tropics uh, interact with higher latitude weather and can create some very fascinating stuff. Now, I believe the primary distributing or deliverer of that heat wave back at the beginning of, the, of September was in part by Hurricane Franklin, took a kind of northward track over the North Atlantic. It then boosted high pressure to its northeast, and then that high pressure become very established over Central Europe. We had low pressure to the west, we had southerly winds, and we had a very, very noteworthy hot spell during the first 10 days of September. Of course, it delivered eight days in a row of 30 Celsius in the UK. We've never seen that before in recorded history, of course. And then the tropics are now, of course, uh, driving a very different flavor of weather across the UK and Ireland. So you can see here multiple uh, systems, some tropical, some cold core, ordinary baroclinic areas of low pressure. We've got, of course, this was, uh, an, uh, you know, Nigel, uh, we've got two areas of high pressure, one near the Azo, uh, Bermuda, sorry, one near the uh, Azores, and we've got a system. There's Margo in between, sandwiched between these two um, 1020, 1026 millibar surface highs. We've got an area of low pressure over the northeast that delivered some very heavy precipitation over the weekend, bringing all sorts of uh, troublesome conditions here. There's Lee. So this is Lee. 
exiting North America, engaging with the jet stream, increasing the therm thermodynamics within the atmosphere. So, of course, cold air to the north, very warm, juicy air to the south, increased jet strength. So, of course, a week across the Atlantic, uh, you know, within the tropics, may, you know, it's only a, a 48 hour um you know transit across the, the north atlantic of course when you've got the jet stream racing at over 100 miles an hour so you've got a forward motion within the deep tropics of a uh, you know 5 10 15 miles an hour whereas you've got uh, an excess of 100 miles an hour driving the system within the mid latitude pattern of course so there's lee there's the system here 977 millibar low that was the first wind and rain maker for the uk uh, during the course of yesterday and even into Monday, of course, that system uh, was a very deep feature just off the southeast of Greenland. We've got another area of low pressure exiting the playing field of the UK. Now, as we play through this loop, very fascinating stuff. So that area of low pressure, sub 980 millibars, cross just to the north of the British Isles here. There's Lee. And of course, we've got that system. Uh, you know, we've got this complex, this mid and upper level setup here, deep trough, as explained in videos all the way back to last week, about how these tropical systems, as they recurve around the western portion of the North Atlantic Basin, they then enhance high pressure ahead of them and then enhance uh, troughiness uh, downstream of that. And that is exactly what we've got now, folks, is we've got a deep trough in place multiple centers of low pressure spinning around that trough and that is exactly what we've got pl playing out at the moment here and then lee uh, weakens somewhat then rejuvenates and that is exactly what we've got going on now so that very system that brought the wind and rain sub 9 80 millibar low uh, monday in the tuesday that system then gets flicked back uh, within the trough circulation itself and then in comes Lee here, and the dynamics are just right for the system to continue deepening. And it looks as if it is um, generating a, a sub 970 millibar low. That is a noteworthy area of low pressure for this time of the year. And this was highlighted way back last week, folks. About a week ago, I said in the title of some of those videos, if you go back and look, the potential for a windstorm uh, sometime early and mid this week and you know even though it might not be a full-fledged windstorm certainly the meteorology is fascinating and it was a pretty decent call so we've got of course lee now in control of our weather bringing all sorts of heavy persistent rain blustery showers increased winds but also increased temperature as well we've seen remarkable rise in temperature as that uh, you know monday night tuesday morning system then exited the playing field then in came Lee, and of course, it had a lot of warm moisture, warm, moist, juicy air came in across Ireland and into the British Isles uh, during the second half of yesterday here. And I'll show you the rise in temperature in just a second. So Lee's in control at the moment. We've got a frontal system extending all the way down through the UK with some very heavy flooding rainfall potentially across England and Wales. We've already seen that. Increased winds uh, now across the northwest where you know winds were literally absent this morning, quite interestingly in it, enough. And of course, we've got that frontal system extending all the way back to Margo. So this is Margo here, not really much of a feature if you notice here, but there's Margo, and we've got a frontal system attached, hooking Margo all the way up to Lee's circulation here. So that might be an injection, an added boost of increased warmth and moisture coming venting off margo up the, the frontal system itself and bringing some very heavy torrential rainfall across parts of england and wales but that's a very very impressive area of low pressure over the western isles at the moment here here's nigel we're keeping a close eye on that because it looks if we play right the way through the loop nigel gets picked up by the jet stream as well and then it does a bit of a Fujiwara effect. So, of course, West Pacific typhoons, they, they kind of get caught and wrapped around each other's circulation. And they kind of do a dance. They kind of do a dance around each other known as a Fujiwara. And it looks as if, uh, you know, between Margo and, and uh, Nigel, we've got this Fujiwara, this kind of dance uh, to the west of the British Isles as we move towards the upper. 
coming weekend. Notice here, tropical system moving into the the North and South Carolina region of the United States here. So that's quite interesting. Could that be a bit of a game changer with regards to a west tracking system? Remember, it's already been highlighted about higher pressure building over Western Europe as we go from the weekend and into early portions of next week here. You notice here that these systems, both the remnants of Margo and Nigel, never get close never get right up they get close but they, they never get right over the british isles in ireland here which is very interesting the reason why is we're seeing higher pressure building over the continent that could be a game changer but also in the western portion of the pacific ocean when you've got recurving typhoons up into the north pacific you tend to get a trough over the central and eastern united states sometimes that is the same type of idea as europe western europe recurving uh, you know tropical systems then increase the trough as we're seeing at the moment across northwestern portions of europe but typhoons that go due west into asia so into china hong kong uh areas such as that sometimes you actually get a, a a boost in pressure over the united states and actually hotter conditions warmer conditions over the central and eastern united states with typhoons going due west into asia do we see a similar situation developing over the northeast Atlantic and northwestern Europe with this feature not recurving but going into the United States? So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. So let's now have a quick look at the details, the evolution of the pattern going on directly over our heads. So, of course, there is that previous system that brought the wind and rain across many parts of the British Isles Monday into Tuesday. So this is the system right here, just to the north of the uh, Northern Isles. There is, at the very edge of the map, there's Lee. So notice the central pressure, 981 millibars here. So it, it did weaken as it moved across the North Atlantic. But if we play through the loop, you notice what takes place here. We hand off that system to the north. Then Lee becomes the central player in our weather this is of course in the last night we had very strong gusty winds by the way across the bulk of england and wales through most of yesterday afternoon and last night here if you notice here we've got a fairly slack uh, wind field across the northern half of the british isles but of course notice the squeeze in the isobars because we've got higher pressure over the near continent we've got a 979 978 millibar uh, remnant low of hurricane lee and that squeeze um, meant that we had some fairly brisk winds coming across Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, Southern Scotland, England and Wales as we played through the course of last night. And then as we played through the loop here, notice the, the widespread nice bars, very little in the way of wind, despite the fact that with a 983 millibar uh, area of um, central pressure across Northern Scotland, even 981 at Aviemore, We've got that 977 millibar area of low pressure, but notice the squeeze in the isobars further south indicating strong winds. All the while, this is also introducing the warmth wrapped up around that circulation, now spreading across Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, and Wales here. Southern Scotland was seeing a rise in temperature during the overnight last night. Further north, we still had the legacy of the last area of low pressure, that had fresher air, so temperature 7, 8 Celsius. We'll look at the details in just a second, but as we play through the loop, you see the system gradually deepening down to 976, 975. It's slow going, if you notice. It's not barreling its way across because of the presence of high pressure near the continent. Then as we play through the loop, there's the current situation. 973 millibar low, squeezing the ice bars. We're seeing the winds pick up across more northern areas of the uk here looking at the wind speeds here and you can see ireland northern ireland and scotland england wales seeing very strong gusty winds less so across the far north here and then at the very end of this loop you can see here the increase in winds further north as that center approaches then finally the temperatures from yesterday looks like this here so you can see here that we um, had relatively uh, fresh conditions across central areas of the British Isles. And this is actually an, uh, um, going back, unfortunately. The temperature is 17 Celsius at Glasgow Airport, 7 at Aviemore, 
big difference depending on where the air mass was. Run out of time. Please like, share and subscribe. See you again tomorrow.